Gang rule, massacres in the streets, a police force overrun, and an international community struggling to help Haiti's deepening crisis. Midweek, the State Department advised Americans to leave Haiti. American Airlines began sending larger capacity airlines to accommodate those, anyone, with the means to do so, including those with families in South Florida. Few journalists know Haiti better than Jackie Charles, Miami Herald's Caribbean reporter who's been covering Haiti, the people, the government, the issues through the last decades. I know you're not that old, but <laughs> Kyle, you've been covering it a long time. I have to. And, um, and we are very grateful for the perspective that you provide. You know, we, uh, I guess when I say we, the public, it began sort of focusing in on this massacre recently in Canaan, where parishioners and a pastor were literally protesting gang rule and were slaughtered in the streets. What has, how, how has this blown up into this crisis? Well, exactly. When you look at Canaan, which is on the outskirts of Port-au-Prince, we have to go back to 2010, the earthquake. earthquake. And you remember we had General Kelly, we had Sean Penn, they were there, they were saying, we need to remove the people off the golf course. We need to provide housing for the quake victims. And so this was a land that which, was- Which wasn't wrong. It, which wasn't wrong, <laughs> it wasn't but wrong. It, this was a land that was empty. The government yeah. was forced to, you know, turn it over. Um, but, you know, Haiti's dysfunctional government works very slow. People went in there. There was no infrastructure. There was nothing. And we were saying like this is going to be larger than most Haitian cities, over 300,000. And I remember like I did the anniversary piece 10 years after the earthquake and we could not go to that community because of gangs. But it wasn't this bad. And I think that when you look at that area, you look at how, you know, the gangs had started to move in um, and people were just sort of ignoring it and thinking maybe it's going to go away. And today you have a situation where more than 80 percent of Port-au-Prince, today the concern, people's homes are being set on fire. 10,000 people have been forced out in the last two weeks alone. 70 people have been killed. And there is fear, real fear, that Port-au-Prince, all of it is going to fall under gang control. Where, where do these gangs get their weapons and what do they want? What is the end game? Well, it depends on the gang. I mean, the, and the weapons are coming from South Florida. Um, you know, and it's not just Haiti, it's throughout the, the, the Caribbean. I mean, we spoke to um, folks in the uh, Biden administration, uh, Jay Weaver and I, and they basically said that at least 50% of their cases today are the illegal shipment of arms to the Caribbean. Um, it's not Mexico anymore. Wow. And um, and depending on the gangs, I mean, the, this what you're seeing in Cafufe, which is a community in Port-au-Prince, what people are telling us is that the gangs want access to kidnapping routes, that the police did manage to shut down one of their kidnapping routes. They want control of this hilltop community, which will allow them to spread out, which would allow them to move kidnap victims because this is how they're getting their money. And a, a lot of people in South Florida with families in Haiti, they have been on the front lines of this where they've had to come up with tens of thousands thousands of dollars to secure the release of their loved ones. And where is the government, it, which is essentially in turmoil on its own yes. since the assassination of Joe You have a government President that's Jovenel. collapsed, it's not elected, you have no elected officials in this country. Is the, and the, the international community, which has been in Haiti for decades, not always successfully, where, what kind of help should the international community and the United States be providing? Well, right now, the United States Embassy is is on the front lines of, of, of the firing. I mean, they are hearing the, the gunshots. They basically put in shelter in place orders for those people that are there. They've been working in terms of trying to get a multinational force. Kenya said, OK, we'll consider this. But I wrote recently how they went to Haiti, and they basically stayed close to the airport. They didn't even go into Port-au-Prince. Um, we're hearing that they are now, after we wrote our story about a static force, they're reconsidering what kind of mandate. But there's also a lot of discussions and debate about that. The UN Security Council Council. Um, people are watching it very closely to see if they will authorize some sort of a resolution for a force to go in and to assist the Haitian National Police. But it needs much more than just a police intervention. They're really, because you kill one gang member and there are dozens of others 
who are already in this gang who are ready to take over. You really have to deal with the developmental issues and what's forcing this. And, and take us down that road, the developmental issues. What is forcing this? Well, you have a situation where you have huge inequality in a country. You have a country today where more, almost half of your population can't find enough to eat. So you have a humanitarian crisis. You have the economy that's in shambles. As I mentioned, not one elected official. So you have a constitutional crisis. You have a political crisis. Nothing's working in the country. And so you go in and you help the police which I just reported 800 police officers that have left this force that only has 3,300 officers on public safety duty on any given day. They, they feel outgunned they and overwhelmed. Outgunned, overwhelmed. They're, yeah. being, they're coming here under this new humanitarian parole program. You have hundreds of gangs. So if you go in and you manage to bring the situation Port-au-Prince under control, don't you think that the gangs will probably move outside of Port-au-Prince? So you need to invest in those communities to shore up. We talked about Kana'a and what happened. That was a vigilante justice. We saw this starting in April, where Haitians could not depend on the government, could not depend on the police, and they decided to take matters into their own hands. Over 300 people have been killed, according to the UN, because of these public lynchings led by the population. Um, but now we see the gangs exacting revenge. Pu They're turning public, back. Public lynchings of gang members? Suspected gang members. But in there, we know of at least one police officer who was killed because they thought that he was a gang member. So when the public takes the justice into their own hands and they become, you know, jury and convictor, you have no idea who, you know, who you're killing. But this was a population that says, we see the gangs are coming into our communities. We cannot lose our communities. We need to fight back. And while they had some success, you see now church members deciding that they're going to go take on a vicious, dangerous gang. And we cannot tell you nor can the police tell you how many people were killed last weekend in this massacre and that was that, that was the the parishioners yes who with were this pastor killed. you know it, it's not lost on a lot of people um, immigration here as a whole in the US is just such a really contentious and controversial yes. issue um, no easy answers but right now and is as mo most recently Thursday, there were plane loads of Haitian nationals deported from the U.S. back to Haiti because they were here illegally under the Biden administration rules. And it's, it's really not lost on the question, how do you deport people back to a country where you, your State Department is telling people to get out? They're telling Americans to get out and they're deporting Haitians back in. And we've asked this question and basically the administration response is that, well, since January, we have vetted and approved over 63,000 Haitians under this Biden humanitarian parole program and over 50,000 have arrived, and, you know, but that they're going to continue to enforce the immigration laws of the United States. At the same time, if Haiti continues to deteriorate, we can probably think that we're going to see an increase in boats leaving either trying to get through the Florida Strait or through Puerto Rico from you know the Dominican side which is you know the neighbor of Haiti and so that crisis is it's, it's real what's happening. Jackie Charles your perspective is amazing I know are you traveling there? I was, re I, I was recently there and we're watching the situation closely at the Miami Herald and we will decide when we need to go back in. But every single day I'm writing about Haiti right. and so I invite people to read our coverage. Yeah, and uh, we all as a South Florida news organization, I think everybody has a real personal stake in covering yes. this too. Thank you so much, appreciate it all. Thank you for having me.